We're looking at National 5 homework on quadratic graphs. We have three questions to answer here and it's worth 15 marks. So let's get started. So question 1a. This graph has the equation of the form y is equal to kx squared. Find the value of k. Right, so the simple way to do that is to find the coordinate uh, on the graph and from there substitute your values into the equation. So we'll see that that's going to be our x coordinate that there will be my y coordinate. I'm going to substitute these into that uh, equation. Okay. So starting off with the equation, I'll substitute x equals 2 from that coordinate that I'm given there and y equals 8. I'm going to substitute that into the equation above. Okay. Right then, let's go for it. Y equals kx squared. 8 going into the left hand side. We don't know what k is yet, and we're just uh, going to try and find out that. And we've got 2 squared. 2 squared will be 4, so I can say that 4k is going to be equal to 8. So k is going to be equal to 8 divided by 4. So k will equal a value of 2. And if I have to rewrite that equation, all I would do is I would substitute in 4k the value 2. So that there would be the graph y is equal to 2x squared. Let's look at the second question. Oh, the next part of this one. Right, so the graph has the equation of the form y is equal to, open bracket, x plus p squared plus q. And we have to write down the equation. Okay, this one is uh, a bit more straightforward. All we're going to do is we're going to substitute some values into that equation there, and that should just give us the, the equation of that uh, graph that we've got right away. Right, so starting off with uh, y is equal to x plus p squared plus q. One thing I know when I've got a graph of this form here, uh, from this equation, I know that the turning point is going to be minus of that value that's there, and I'll take that value as it is. So that's the turning point that we'll get from there. Right, so here's the values that I've got here. So that there will be minus p, that value there will be q. So we're just writing that straight into that equation, y is equal to x, and it's going to be minus 3 squared, plus the value for q is 2, and there we go there, and that's that complete. So the way I just think about it is from the coordinate that's there, the one that I'm putting in there, that's going to be the opposite. So if it's a positive 3 there, it's going to be a negative 3 there. If I had a negative value over here, then it'll be a positive in there. And all I'll do is I'll just take this one here from Q, just straight as it is. Okay, so that'll give us our two marks from here. So let's see where we're going to get our marks. Okay. So in this question here, we're going to get two marks for this. I'll go for one mark for getting this part right here, and one mark for getting that. So that's the two marks there, back up to the top. And we'll go for one mark for substituting in and getting this here. Next one for getting our value of k. So just two marks for each of these. Right, so we're now looking at uh, sketching uh, a couple of graphs. So the first one that we're going to be looking at is to sketch a graph and we're going to show the intercepts of the axes and the turning point for this format here. So I've got y is equal to a double bracket here, y minus 4 and then an x plus 2. Right, so from here what I can do is I can work out the roots pretty quickly. So for the roots, and the roots are where it crosses over the x-axis, so for the roots, what we'll go for is we'll let y equal 0. Because the y coordinate, when it's on the x-axis, is going to be equal to 0. So I'm substituting 0 into this side of the equation. And from there, I can see that either x minus 4 equals 0, or what I've got is x plus 2 equals 0. Just take the 4 over to the other side, change its sign, so x equals 4 and that'll be x equals minus 2. So the coordinates that I've got already, 4 from there, and 0 from there. Minus 2 from there, and 0 from there. 
Okay, so that's the that's the roots that I've got already, so I know where it's cutting through the x-axis. Let's look for the axis of symmetry. And what that'll do is that'll allow us to find the turning point. So the axis of symmetry next. Right, for the axis of symmetry, what we're going to do is we're going to find the midpoint between these two here. simple way to do that is going to be to add these together, divide it by 2. So take the mean of each of them. So adding the top together there, we've got uh, 2. 2 divided by 2 is going to give me 1. So the axis of symmetry, if I was asked for the equation, it would be x equals 1. Now what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to substitute the 1 into the equation up here to find the y value. If I know the x value is 1, then if I calculate that through, I'll find out what the y value is. And that'll give me my turning point. So I'll substitute x equals 1 into the equation up above. Right, so let's put a 1 in there. So y is going to be equal to 1 minus 4, and 1 plus 2. So in this bracket here, I've got uh, minus 3. In this bracket here, I've got 3. So I can see that y is going to be equal to minus 9. So the coordinate that I've got right away from here is going to be 1 from here. That's what I used, my axis of symmetry. So that's a 1. And I've got minus 9 for my y value. OK, so I'm building up a big picture here of uh, how to put this graph together. So I've got the, uh, the roots. And I've also got the turning point. The only thing left is to find the y-intercept. Okay, so for the y-intercept, <coughs> what we'll do is, so if I know where it cuts the y-axis going vertical, I know that the x value for that is equal to zero. So I'm going to let x equal zero when I do that. So let's substitute it into the equation. So starting off with x minus 4, x plus 2, and I'm going to let x equal 0. So it's going to be 0 minus 4, 0 plus 2. We have minus 4 in this first bracket, 2 in there, so that's going to give me a value of negative 8. So I've got an x value of 0 and a y value negative 8. So 0 minus 8. So that's me got everything that I need to be able to sketch that uh, that curve. Right, let's go ahead and sketch it. Right, so I'll just move this up a bit and we'll just draw just below this line. Right then, so let me start off by just getting that line in here. I know that I'm going to be below the axis, so from there, let's go across to here. There's my y values going in that direction. X values going in that direction there. So I know that uh, what I'll have is, I'll have, uh, if I think about my uh, roots, the, where I'm going to cut through the x, the x-axis, it's going to be 4, 0, and minus 2, 0. So where I can go here, let's go for, let's go there. That'll give me the 4, that'll give me the minus 2, just about here somewhere, okay? So there's minus 2, there's the value of 4. And I'm going down, uh, I'm going down to 0, minus 8 down in this direction here, so let's go down to there and that'll give me a minus 8 there, where I'm cutting through the y-axis and I'm turning at 1 minus 9, so that's somewhere about here, okay? So that'll be 1 minus 9. And my curve should look something like coming down from here, down to here, turning at this point here, because this is my turning point, coming back up and it uh, should be coming through 4, 0. That's there. So that would be my curve sketched based on the information that I've collected. So remember when we're going to draw a curve like this, it's quite straightforward what I need. I need where it cuts through the x-axis, I need where it cuts the y-axis, and I need to find the turning point. The way to find the turning point, work out your axis of symmetry, and it must lie on the axis of symmetry there. And just substitute that value of 1 into that t equation and we'll work it out from there. Right, so we'll go to part B. Part B, we have to draw this graph here, okay? So first thing that we'll look at is look out for the turning point in this type of form here. So I know the turning point is going to be, it's going to be the opposite of this value that's here, so it's going to be 5, 
and I'm going to take that value as it is, 3. So that's where I know it's going to turn. For this graph here, if I want to know if it's a, a maximum or a minimum, I just need to look at the x value there, and I can see when that bracket's squared, when it's squared out, I can get an x squared value that comes there, and it's going to be positive. So if it's positive, it's going to be a minimum. Let's just prove that just now, and we'll, we'll show. You don't need to do this working, but this is this is what we'll look at to see if this works out for us. Right, let's square that bracket. So if you square it by foil, you can do that. Well, let's do that just now, if that's the way that you would do it. Right, so x times x gives me x squared. So there it is already, I've got a positive x squared, and that's the one that I'm really interested in. So I've got minus 5x, minus 5x, and I've got plus 25, and plus 3. If I just gather that up together, so I've got x squared, I've got minus 10x, and gathering these together, that should give me plus 28 from there. <clears throat> so what I can see from that equation there is, x squared is positive, so therefore curve is a minimum. And just remember if it's positive, it's like uh, just your, your usual happy face, okay, so it's in that form there, it turns at the bottom, so that's why it would be called a minimum. From that I could draw the graph because I can see that if the graph is going to be that shape, it's turning above the x-axis, it's not going to cut through the x-axis. Another way I could do that is I could look at the discriminant and use this here, and what I would get is I would get a value that's going to be less than zero, and that would tell me that it doesn't cut through the x-axis at all. Okay, so the only other thing that I need would be the, the y-intercept, and I'll just go ahead and uh, work that one through. So for the y-intercept, so just where it cuts through the, the y-axis, we'll let x equal 0, just the same as we've done over here. So I've got y is equal to, and it's x minus 5 squared, plus 3, and we'll put a 0 in there where the x value is. So I've got minus 5 squared, plus 3, so that's going to give me 25, plus 3, it gives me 28. That tells me where it's going to cut through the uh, the axis. So I've got a coordinate there of 0, 28. Right, so if I just go ahead and uh, sketch that graph, so just a very rough sketch of it. So what I've got here is, I'm going to know that I've got a turning point. A turning point here of 5, 3, so let's go along 5, just say that's 5 there and 3 up to there. So there's 5, 3. And I'm going to cut through up here somewhere, which will be looking like the value of 28. So that's my y-axis, my x-axis, and the zero there. Okay, so drawing the graph, so it must be coming in this direction here. It's coming down here, it's a minimum turning point, and then just going back up from there. And there we go. Okay, so that's the minimum turning point, and that would be for this graph here. Turning point, where it cuts the y-axis, and in this case, it doesn't cut through the x-axis at all, so no values to gain from there. Okay, let's look at some of the marks for here. I think what we'll go for is, let's see, so let's go for these coordinates here. So getting the, the roots correct here would be one mark. Getting the, uh, the turning point would be another mark. Getting that value there where it cuts through the y-axis, another mark and then for drawing it and annotating the graph correctly. Get another mark there. Right, so this one here, out of four. This side here, let's look at it and we'll get a mark for the turning point. We'll get a mark for where it turns and a mark for annotating the graph correctly. Remember, make sure that you put your values in that you need and show where turning points and uh, where you cross over the X and Y axis. Okay, right, last question in this, in this section, this is the, uh, the graph section. Right then, so for a quad quadratic function, we've got one, so it's written round in a different method, a different way, so I've got 3 minus, and then a bracket, x plus a half uh, squared, right down its turning point. 
Okay, so if I, if I just thought about that and rewrote that out, I've got uh, minus, that's going to be x plus a half, and that's going to be squared, and that's going to be plus 3. So I've just rearranged it just a bit. And remember what we did from uh, question 2b, the turning point, I would know, the turning point for this one is the opposite of this one here. So it's going to be a minus a half, and I'll take that value as it is, 3. Right, and what I can see from this though, when I square that bracket out, then it will be x squared in there, but then I'll need to multiply it by a minus, which will give me a negative x squared. So since uh, x squared is negative, okay, so it's a minus x squared there, um, we have a maximum turning point. Okay, so a maximum turning point. So if it's negative, what we're looking at is it's kind of negative in that way. Okay, so it's negative turning at the top. So if it's turning at the top, it's turning at its maximum value. So that's going to be a maximum turning point for us there. So what we've done is we've answered part A already. So that's given the turning point here and the nature. So the nature is a maximum turning point. For part B, the equation of the axis of symmetry of the parabola, well, what we can do here is the, the equation of the, uh, the axis of symmetry. And that's going to be, if I look at this here again, it's going to be x is equal to minus p. So whatever value is in there is the opposite of it. So remember this is your turning point, so if the, the curve is actually turning at an x value of minus a half, that must be our axis of symmetry. So x is equal to minus a half, and that's the equation. Okay, and that's us complete. Let's see the, the marks that we'll gain here. So we've got three marks for part A. So let's go for one mark for getting this part correct, one mark for getting that one, and one mark for stating it's a maximum turning point. So that's three marks for there. And one mark for getting x is equal to minus a half. So this part of the homework is out of 15 marks. Um, and hope, hope you've uh, maybe got some information from, from what I've shown you so far to give you a better idea of some of the quadratic graphs at uh, National 5.